Bless up Electroculture family. So we have four models of antennas that we make at the Fertile Current and I'm going to go over all four of them today and show you the differences. They're virtually all very similar um, but they do have some different nuances and some slightly different technologies applied and they're all purpose driven. So let's look at what's going on with each model. This is the CW1, the first model we ever designed based on the Crystal Flu antenna. Highly inspired by that. Um, this is the aerial antenna. This is the one that you want to mount up on the pole 20 to 25 feet or higher. The higher the better. Um, this is the aerial antenna that you'll connect to a ground wire. The most authentic, historically authentic application of electroculture. So here we have the wire array, the steel wires on top. The wind blows through these wires at a higher elevation. Um, the atmospheric electricity is collected through this part of the apparatus. That's its function. So it's designed to be at a higher elevation. Moving down to the telluric rod, the brass telluric rod, this is what will face magnetic south. The magnets are in line with that flow. And also on this section we have the voltaic stack, which through electrochemical exchange of the different metals creates voltage. This is the thermocouple utilizing the Seebeck effect of dissimilar metals creating voltage at different temperatures. That's going r directly into the wire as well. All these components are hardwired to our lead wire, which then is coupled to the ground wire. And will run south to north on your garden and your farm, orchard, however you're applying this technology. So this is the aerial antenna designed to go as high as possible. Moving along to the CW2 model. This is a very similar antenna, however, it's slightly slimmer. Uh, it will hold a little, it holds a little less basalt in the core filling. And obviously the main difference up here is that instead of the wire array, we have a tensor rod. So this antenna is designed to be mounted at low elevations where it would make the, the uh, atmospheric collection a little void because once you get down around 15 feet, it just starts pairing out with the ground anyway and you're not really collecting that into the antenna below that point as well as efficiently. So this is a low lower mount antenna. It's intended for that design. You can put it as high as you'd like, but everything is done with intention. So this one we're utilizing piezoelectricity in place of that atmospheric electricity. We're still utilizing telluric current in the brass rod. The magnets are aligned, voltaic stack, thermocouple. So otherwise it's the same. It also couples, I have this already set up on a little PVC mount. It can slip right over uh, a grounding rod or a, a T-post. This is a really ideal model for trellis crops that, you're, that may not be permanent, that you may be moving around. So while you can mount this one as high as you'd like, it's designed to be mounted at lower elevations. The CW3 is our compost antenna, and we call it that because it's meant to sit in a compost pile or windrow for long periods of time, energizing the compost and fluxing elements into their higher potentials. So this is a larger diameter body. It holds a lot of paramagnetic basalt in the core, larger magnets. Um, we have two tensor rods on top, creating more piezo current. So this is a real beast. This one will generate a lot of voltage compared um, to some, some of the other models at low elevation. So this is gonna be sitting typically at a much lower elevation in a windrow or pile. And you can mount it on a uh, grounding rod and connect this lead wire right to that to run that vertically into a pile. Or it can also be connected to a wire that would run under the pile or within the pile or windrow. So there's options on how to, how to utilize that. But this is designed to be sitting at a very low elevation while still creating a nice amount of voltage for the system. Moving to the CW4 Petite Paramagnetic Antenna, this is obviously a very small model and it's designed really for indoor use, for indoor plants, potted plants inside. Um, tried to make it attractive, it's all copper and brass. Um, it has all the features of the larger antennas and is kind of designed to look like a really scaled down CW1. But it does have the addition of the leads for frequency generation, alligators here to a BNC connector for a frequency generator. 
Um, you can really adapt it to any apparatus, MP3 player, cell phone, uh, frequency generation programs. So this would be for experimenting with radionic fertilization. Um, you can also use this as a biofeedback antenna on organ uh, radios and other radionics devices that you may have. Um, and it will also do the same functions as the larger antennas for your indoor plants and will insert directly into a container. So I hope this helps delineate on the differences of the models. If there's any more questions, feel free to reach out.